He's turned out to be a good choice. I took a little heat at the beginning, but he was, uh, I, knew, I knew the brain was a good one, about as good as it gets. And we love the family, and we're going to have a great four years, and we're going to turn our country around, make it something very special. It lost that, lost that little, it lost that little, uh, that little thing called special, we have to make it so. We're going to make this so great. It's going to, it's the greatest country and potentially the greatest country in the world by far. And right now, we're going to just work very hard to get all of that back. We're going to make it the best it's ever been. We can do that. We just, if we had to wait longer, I don't know. It was going bad, and it was going bad fast. We're going to have to seal up those borders, and we're going to have to let people come into our country. We want people to come back in, but we have to — we have to let them come back in, but they have to come in legally. They have to come in legally. Let me also express my tremendous appreciation for Susie and Chris, the job you did. Susie, come, Susie, come here. Come here, Susie. Chris, come here, Chris. Susie likes to stay sort of in the back, let me tell you. The Ice Maiden. We call her the Ice Maiden. Come here, Chris. Chris. Come here, Chris. Susie likes to stay in the background. She's not in the background. Come here, Susie. This was unexpected, but I just want to thank, obviously, President Trump for this journey. It was a great one, um, and he's a hell of a candidate. And he's going to be a hell of a great 47th president. And this team that we had, the best team, and of course, even my boss, Susie Wiles, the best. Thank you. Thank you, and, and thank you, Susie. Look at her. She's shy. I've never seen her be shot before. Susie. Uh, they've been, they're great. Everybody up here is great. Everybody up here is very special. But uh, the Trump yeah, — who did you say? Oh, let me tell you, we have a new star. A star is born, Elon. Now he is. Now he's an amazing guy. We were sitting together tonight. You know, he spent two weeks in Philadelphia and different parts of Pennsylvania campaigning. You know, he sent the rocket up two weeks ago. And I saw that rocket, and I saw it coming down. I saw it. It was — when it left, it was beautiful, shiny white. When it came down, it didn't look so pretty. It was going 10,000 miles an hour, and it was burning like hell. I said, what happened to your paint job? He said, we've never made a paint that could withstand that kind of heat. And uh, — but I saw it come down and turn around. And it was — you know, it's like 22 stories tall, by the way. It looks a little smaller than that, but it's big. And it came down and down, and you saw all that fire burning. And, and I'm saying, only Elon can do this. It must be an Elon. And I tell the story. I told it last night. I had a man on the phone. I had the screen muted, no sound. I was talking to a very important man, happens to be here. And that very important guy, one of the most important people in, I would say, the country, actually. But, you know, I was president, and now it looks like I was going to be maybe president again, so I figured I could ask him to hold. So I asked him to hold. And because — especially because you're going to be president again, they hold. So I took the phone down, and I'm looking at the screen. I'm seeing this crazy thing that's going around and coming down. It looks like it's going to crash into the gantry. And I said, oh, no. And I said, do me a favor. Do you mind holding for a couple of minutes? I want to see this. I thought it was a Space Age movie or something. I put the phone down. Bad part, I didn't pick it up for 45 minutes, and he was holding. But this spaceship came down, and I saw those engines firing, and it looked like it was over, it was going to smash. And then I saw the fire pour out from the left side, and I put it straight, and it came down so gently, and then it wrapped those arms around it, and it held it. And just like you hold your baby at night, your little baby, and it was a beautiful thing to see, and I called Elon. I said, Elon, was that you? He said, yes, it was. I said, who else can do that? Can Russia do it? No. Can China do it? No. 
Can the United States do it other than you? No, nobody can do that. I said, that's why I love you, Elon. That's great. And you know, when we had the tragic hurricane, Helene, and it hit, in particular, it hit North Carolina. They were really devastated, the water. This was a big water, as big as we've ever seen, water hurricane. It built lakes out of nothing. Fields became lakes, and, and the danger was unbelievable. And the people from North Carolina came to me, and they said, would it be possible, at all possible, for you to speak to Elon Musk? We need Starlink. I said, what's Starlink? It's a form of communication. So I called Elon. And I'll tell you what, he had, and it was very dangerous. People would die. They had no communication. All the wires were down. I called Elon Musk. I said, Elon, you have something called Starlink. Is that right? Yes, I do. What the hell is it? He said, it's a communication system that's very good. I said, Elon, they need it really, really badly in North Carolina. Can you get it? He had that there so fast. It was incredible. So, and it was great. It saved a lot of lives. He saved a lot of lives. But he's a character, he's a special guy, he's a super genius. We have to protect our geniuses. We don't have that many of them. We have to protect our super geniuses. I want to thank some of the guys. You know, we have up here today the U.S. Open champion. He's a fantastic golfer. He's slightly longer than me. It's a ball a little bit longer than me. Just a little bit. Bryson DeChambeau is up here someplace. What happened to Bryson? Where is he? Bryson. Oh, he was shot. He's hitting balls. Oh, he's on the way. He's hitting balls. Bryson. Oh, look at him. He had a great, he's a, got a great career going. Great U.S. Open, Bryson. That's a fantastic job. And we also have a man, Dana White, who has done some job. He's a tough guy. <laughs> so Dana started UFC and uh, came to me. Do you mind if I use your, nobody wanted to give him a rinse because they said it's a rough sport, a little rough. And uh, I helped him out a little bit, and I went, and I said, this is the roughest sport I've ever seen, but I began to like it, and he loved it, and nobody's done a better job in sports. And, and you know, he's a very uh, motivational kind of a guy, what he does. He gets these fighters, and they, they really go at it. And it's become one of the most successful sports enterprises anywhere at any time. It's doing so well. I'd like to ask Dana just to say a couple of words, because people love to hear from him. Dana, please. Jodi Aponoko, a mobility of Holagila, the Bama channel could like, share, or subscribe Karipaku Jama Bibulun tonight.